Mic check, one, two, one, two. Greetings and salutations. Good day, good day, good day. What's good, y'all? You hear me all right? Welcome, welcome, welcome. We'll begin in just a moment. If you can hear me okay, maybe click that screen a couple of times so that I know that you are listening, that you can hear me all right. We're going to be doing Tarot Tuesday today. Three of Cups, Lord of Abundance. If anybody needs to see them as we're warming up, getting these energies moving. Tarot Tuesday is where we will read readings for all 12 Zodiac houses, starting with Aries, moving all the way to Pisces. We do this every week general readings for the collective all 12 houses of the astrological calendar welcome in welcome in we are just beginning these cards are ready they are so ready are you no worries no worries we're taking our time allow yourself to get yourself some water maybe some snacks maybe some tea We'll be here for a little bit this evening. Like I said, we'll be reading for all 12 astrological houses. Starting with Aries, making our way to Pisces. General readings for everybody. It's a little chilly. I'm just feeling extra cozy right now. Not too cold. Just wanted to bundle up. Welcome in, welcome in. Blessed be Apothecary. Thank you for the roses. Hi, Mountain Mama. How are you tonight? I am. It's a beautiful day. Super stoked to see what these cards have to say be doing general readings for everybody glad to hear it epic 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 in a moment in a moment we're just getting started amanda welcome in welcome in we're just getting started Healing more so than contagious, honestly. Hey, Shea Butter Babe. It's all goody. It's all goody. Not a worry. You don't have to explain yourself. Thank you, Mountain Mama. Absolutely. That's why we're here. Like I said, today is Tarot Tuesday, where we read for all 12 houses, starting with Aries, house number one, making our way to Pisces, house number 12. We'll begin in just a moment. Let some dudes jump into the room. Welcome in, welcome in. It's good to see you. How's your day so far? Where are you tuning in from? What are you grateful for today? Welcome from Washington State. Welcome from Canada. Welcome from Minnesota and California. <sighs> Cheers. Grateful for the ability to grave. Be grateful. Welcome from West Virginia. Grateful for life in general. Absolutely. Good way to be. Gratitude is the mood. Stay rooted, grounded in gratitude. In such a way. Welcome from Oklahoma. Sounds wild. Salutations from Austria. Grateful for the integration. Grateful for some sunshine. All the vibes. All the vibes. We'll begin in just one moment. If it's your first time here, hi, I'm Gavin. Zen, it's good to see you. Every single Tuesday we do this. It's called Tero Tuesday where we read for all 12 houses of the Zodiac. I'm so grateful to be here. Super stoked to get started. Just want to let some dudes jump into the room before we get right to it. Hi from Florida. Hey, hey, hi, hi. 
It's a beautiful life. House number one is the house of Aries. This is the identity. Yes, this is you in the beginning, right before you even jumped into a body. You as a soul, as a spark. Yes, house number one is persona. Evolving into the personality. My sun is Pisces. My moon is Gemini. My rising is Scorpio. How about you? What are your big three? Give it like another minute or so before we get started. Let some dudes jump to the room. If you hear me clearly, go ahead and click that screen a couple times. And if you are ready for these readings this evening, go ahead and drop that number three. That Drop that number three. Just so I know that you are ready and you I want to get started with me. What's good, Lauren? Welcome in. Taurus, Scorpio, Gemini, Libra, Sun. Sag Moon, Aqua Rising, Epic Epic, Gemini Sun, Capricorn Moon, Gemini Rising. The three three threes, I see everybody. Epic, epic indeed. Rosie, thank you for those roses. It's in the name. I love it. Super stoked. We're ready to get started, yeah? Fantastic. We're going to draw three cards from the Hermetic Tarot, one card from the Goddess Power Oracle. And like I said, we always begin with house number one, Aries, Sun, Moon, Ascendance, if you want to find out your big three, I would recommend you look up your natal chart. I would recommend personally, Cafe Astrology. That's where I typically go. Capricorn Sun, Scorpio Moon, Cancer Rising. Epic, epic, epic. Welcome in, Jess. Hi, Tiffany. Meow, Minnie. What's good, Michaela? Libra Sun, Aries Rising, Cancer Moon. Did you already have your birthday or is it right around the corner? Welcome in, welcome in. Alrighty, let's get started, yeah? Shall we, shall we, shall we? Fantastic. Before anything, I want to say thank you. Thank you to all of our guides. Thank you to all of our guardians. Thank you to our angels, our aliens, those watching over us, showing up for us, our spirit team. Thank you for the support. Thank you for the guidance, letting us be a cosmic conduit to channel these messages today. What a joy it is. We are ready to play. Absolutely, we are ready to get started for the collective Cafe Astrology D. That's the one. Patchouli and Paisley's. I like your username. That's cool. Yeah, Cafe Astrology. All right, let's get right to it. Aries, house number one. This is the identity, the individual. This is where it all begins, new beginnings. Aries, sun, moon, ascendance, or wherever you may have the first house in your chart. Let's get right to it. We are stoked. We are ready to play. Let's clear this energy. Let's cut it. Get right to it. Do I have any Aries in the house? Any Aries, sun, moon, and ascendance in the house? What's good? What's good? We all have a house number one, wherever you have that placement for you. This can apply. Welcome in, Jane. Hi, Bianca. What's good, Lauren? I see you with Aries, moon. Aries, for you, my dudes, let's get right to it, shall we? We draw two from the top of the deck. If you wanted to, Lily, you are the creator of your reality, ultimately, if it counts to you. Personally, I don't follow Vedic astrology. I've heard that it's a distraction from traditional astrology, but that's just my take on it. Right now, for Aries house number one, we have Ten of Cups here. Lord of Perfected Success. Lord of perfected success. We got some real words on the table today. Nine of swords here. These cards aren't playing around. We're ready to get right to it. For Aries, we got the ten of cups. We've got the nine of swords, lord of despair and cruelty. Seven of swords in the root, lord of unstable effort. Lord of unstable effort, lord of despair and cruelty, lord of perfected success. And here, Isis. The goddess of rebirth, the goddess of the underworld here for the collective house number one. I'm getting this sense to remind us to not be ever too attached. And see, you are a soul beyond space, time, and definition. You are an individual who cannot be contained ultimately. And at any chance, any moment, you're allowed to rebirth yourself. You're allowed to rewrite your story. We are nothing more than the stories we tell ourselves. And Aries, house number one, is where it all begins. So what stories are you telling yourself? You are not your body. 
You are not your age. You are not your role in your relationships. You are not your career. You are not what has happened to you. You are not your mistakes. You are a pure being in the core, ultimately. And the real challenge is learning how to unclutter all of the density. Lord of despair and cruelty, Lord of unstable effort, we're being reminded of how important it is to work through the karma, to clear all this so we can return to our dharma, ultimately. Lord of perfected success, this is the path to stay persistent, to stay committed, to stay devoted to your expression, to your energy, to your connection to the divinity within you. And you are always welcome to rebirth yourself. If there's something that's not in resonance, you got to start taking radical responsibility and actions to shift the dynamics. It's not easy. I'm not saying that it is. I'm saying that you are gifted and you are so much stronger than you give yourself credit for, for those in resonance. So what has been causing despair and cruelty within your life? And is it your responsibility to continue to perpetuate these cycles? Or how can you create space from these? Ultimately, learning how to recognize when we are partaking in processes or patterns that are unstable. You can't force it. You can't force a dang thing. All good things happen organically. All good things take time and nothing great came easy. Ultimately, we're learning how to stay resilient, devoted, consistent, persistent, connected to our core. This is where we can then tap into our own personal energy and how the energy moves through us, connecting to our own personal divinity because we are all God in body and learning how to see ourselves as this is key. At any time, you're allowed to rebirth yourself. I'm not saying it's easy. In fact, it's probably one of the most uncomfortable things that you can do, just like being birthed into the world. Being birthed into the world usually is not a pleasant process. A lot of growing pains happening right now as all the shifts are occurring as we step in from summer to autumn. <clears throat> as it's becoming colder, a lot of discomfort is occurring. A lot of people feel discomfort in the cold, but you can find that warmth within your soul. <clears throat> Right now, the message is to continue to rebirth yourself daily. Every inhale, we are revitalized. We breathe into the life that it is that we wish to live and exhale. We let it to rest. Anything that is no longer in alignment with this, that what it is that we want to cultivate within our existence. So what patterns, what programs, what ways of beingness are unstable in your life right now? How can you make peace with this and how can you choose to rebirth or rewrite your story so that you can become the author of your life? And as you write your stories more consistently, you become more familiar with that pen and how you hold it so you can become the writer of your own personal script rather than feeding a script of a matrix that just wants to see you get stuck in cycles of despair and cruelty and unstable effort because that's how society the western world is able to operate by keeping people stuck in perpetual cycles of trauma pain and suffering they're loops they're trauma loops and, and the trauma stores itself in our body and so we must exercise that we must alchemize that we must what is the word i'm looking for process, but I'm looking for a specific word that's similar to process in order to um, metabolize. That's the word I'm looking for. Metabolize. Transmute is transmute and process and trans transmute and process are all synonymous, but I'm, I'm looking for the word metabolize. It's literally the body transforming these energies and shitting it out so you can let it go. You can let that shit go. It's so important to metabolize it because your metabolism is connected to your uh, immune system and as you continue to commit to this path of healing your body will clear these energies and it'll release these it'll let go of these internalized patterns and programs i'm not saying it's easy but i'm saying that you are so gifted and you would not be here right now sitting with me in this present moment if it wasn't in some level of resonance so thank you for allowing me to share this message aries how can you return to your personal flame rather than the stories that have been bestowed upon you without your consent doing your daily practices to allow yourself to connect to your own personal energy. For me, yoga, breath work, and meditation have been the trinity for assisting me in stepping into my own personal divinity. Also the cards. The cards are a great tool to allow us to return to a daily practice with the intention of connecting to one's own personal energy. So, so crucial. Thanks, Heidi. I do what I can. Nothing more than a reflection of you. What's good, Lynn? Welcome in. Emily, it's an honor and a joy to share the message. 
absolutely. We're going to keep this energy flowing. This is Tarot Tuesday. Welcome in. We are doing 12 readings for all 12 houses. We are just now wrapping up Aries house number one. If you dug that, even if you don't have much Aries energy in your chart, we all have house number one somewhere. That's typically in alignment with your rising sign. If you dug that message, go ahead and drop the number one. Go ahead and drop the number one so I know that you're vibing. And we're going to get flowing to house number two up next. Taurus, sun, moon, ascendance, wherever you may have a Venus placement. Taurus, Taurus, Taurus. Patchouli, thank you for the gift. Appreciate this. I see all my ones out here because you're you're number one. Don't you ever forget you are the one. You are the one. And I'm nothing more than a reflection of you. And we've won already just being here today. Welcome in, my Taurus babes. Sun, moon, ascendance. House number two is all about our values, what it is that we stand by, what it is that we hold in our core. House number two, sun, moon, ascendance, wherever you may have a Venus placement, what do you value and how is this expressed unto your life? Let's get it. We are so stoked. We are flowing. Let's do this. Do I have any Taurus in the house? Amanda, I see ya. Jeanette, I see ya. Let's get right to it. House number two, Taurus, sun, moon ascendance we are here for it we cut it we clear it we let it rest perfectly timed perfectly timed what's good what's good we get right to it for the collective house number two today we draw two cards from the top of each deck we flip the decks upside down to show the roots and invite in one goddess for you all three cards from the tarot are reverse the goddess for you today, right side up, Uzume, the goddess of humor. Personally, I value humor so dearly. And if you know, you know that the universe has a deep sense of humor. We have the universe here in the root of the Hermetic Tarot, the ones of the great night time, the universe here. We have the Lord of Abundance here in reverse, Lord of Abundance, and Four of Cups here, Lord of Blended Pleasure. With the fact that all these cards were in reverse, I'm getting this energy that we're being called to focus on joy, to focus on humor, to begin to integrate these energies deeper. You see, the more that we can like laugh at the great cosmic joke and laugh along with that eternal hum of the universe, the more we reclaim our power. Because when we're stuck in states of pain and frustration, anger, disappointment, depression, this is how we give our power away. But the more we can just like laugh at it, even if you don't like find it funny, you can like Make yourself laugh. You want to practice together? Listen to this. You ready? You ready? <laughs> I know, right? It's corny, but it works, and that shifts your energy right away. Did anybody else laugh along? I respect you. Because right now, we are being reminded that abundance is not based on coins abundance is not based on resources it's not based on external abundance is the feeling that you have everything that you need knowing that there's so much energy all around us and the universe is opulent earth is opulent so abundant beyond belief the more that we can prioritize joy humor pleasure the more that we can reclaim our power i know it's corny but it's the most radical thing you can do in a society that literally is only able to perpetuate itself through pains through cycles of pain and suffering and doing so we're capable of returning to our power reclaiming our divinity and choosing to be the creators of our reality the more you can prioritize laughter and joy within your life the light-hearted you will feel and this all ultimately is all for the better all for the better so you may continue to prioritize this my dude my dude D, you can find your rising sign by looking up your natal chart. You have to know the uh, time of your birth because the rising sign changes every two hours throughout the day. So if you know the time of your birth, you'll be able to find your rising sign. It's also known as the ascendant. Rising and ascendant. Yes, and the city. But... Hey, Turbo. Hey Turbo, we are currently doing uh, readings for all 12 houses. These are general readings for the collective. We're now wrapping up house number two. So if that resonated for you, my dudes, reminding ourselves of the simple joys and the pleasures of life and prioritizing this and in doing so feeling that abundance, go ahead and drop that number two, learning how to see yourself as the center of your universe because ultimately you are the universe. It all begins within. We must learn how to see ourselves as this. 
that resonated, go ahead and drop that number two. We're going to keep it moving for house number three right around the corner. House number three is Gemini energy. Gemini sun, moon, ascendance, wherever you have a Mercury placement. Twos, I see you. My dudes, appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's keep this energy moving. House number three, Gemini, tonight, this evening. Let's get right to it. We are focused. We are flowing. We are stoked to do this. Do I have any Geminis in the house? Gemini sun, moon, ascendance. I have a Gemini moon. So this one will rise. This one applies for me. Lynn with the Gemini rising. I see you. Gemini says, and epic, epic, epic. What's good, my Gemini squad? Angel flock. Let's get right to it. Sun, moon, ascendant, Gemini placements. Wherever you have a Mercury, wherever you have house number three. House number three is all about communication as well as vocalization and how you speak unto the world. Gemini is the first sign of air. Air is the element of words as well as visual mental energy. Gemini, house number three, how are we communicating our values and our essence onto the world? Let's get right to this. We are focused. We are flowing. We are doing this. We're going to cut this deck. We'll clear it. We will let it rest. We draw two cards from the top. Flip the deck upside down to show the root. We draw one for you. Outstanding, my dudes. The star here in the root for Gemini. The star here, the daughter of the firmament. If you know, you know. If you don't know, don't worry. We have the Five of Wands here, Lord of Strife. The Star, Lord of Strife, Five of Wands. And here we have the Seven of Cups, Lord of Illusory Success. It seems that these cards are not holding back today. They're not super lighthearted messages yet, but they're being real. And sometimes we gotta get that real message. And the goddess for you, Gula, the goddess of healing here in reverse. The fact that Gula, the goddess of healing, is in reverse, reminding me of how important it is to prioritize the journey of healing. To not become addicted to the journey of healing, but reminding ourselves that healing is a non-linear journey. Healing is not. It's a lifelong journey. We are always healing. As long as there is suffering in the world, there is still more healing to do. So when you see, for personally, like as someone who is a, a worker in the healing arts, never will I claim to be completely healed and never will I claim to heal anybody else aside from myself because you can't heal anybody but yourself and the more that you can learn how to tap into your cosmic gifts your astral aspects learning how to see yourself as the star that you are the more you can show up and play your role in these constellations today see a real healer a true healer doesn't heal anybody but they provide the space for people to heal themselves they can they can encourage the individual to heal themselves but ultimately we're being reminded right now to not strive to not to stop giving our energy to false illusions of success for example, like trying to impress people outside of ourselves, or thinking that we need a career or a degree or a specific way of lifestyle in order to be successful. Like, no, as long as you are satisfied with yourself, that's success. Ultimately, you think the stars are out there in the sky comparing themselves to each other? Nah, so why do we compare each other to each other, right? The stars aren't like, dang, that star is out there shining real bright right now. Like, I wish I could shine brighter. Like, no, the stars are just doing their thing. And they're just moving through the cosmos organically. They're trusting the process. They're leaning into their journey around the cosmos. And they're being reminded that we all have these astral cosmic aspects within ourselves. The more we can slow down and attune to our own journey of healing, the more we can then gain this clarity and have a greater sense of who we are and why we are here. That's also the star card, who you are and why you are here. And that's your soul's mission, ultimately. So crucial, so crucial indeed. Ultimately, the more we can minimize this need to to strive striving is like to reach you, you know it's like ah, like you, you ever hear yourself or you hear somebody speaking and it just like sounds like they're reaching for the truth but they're not actually rooted in it sometimes we do that ourselves sometimes we hear other people doing it this is like that striving energy it's like trying too hard and we don't ever need to try too hard the stars aren't trying at all they're just doing their thing and that's what we're here to do today just to do our thing we don't need to try we just need to be ultimately because you're already a star baby and don't you let anyone tell you otherwise i want to also commend you for choosing the journey of healing because it's rare it's rare in a world that is in a society that is sick it's so important to choose this journey of healing and in doing so that is rebellious in choosing your own personal well-being and choosing your journey of peace and prosperity you are committing to this path of healing you're establishing an example and you're 
laying the groundwork for the entire world because our natural state of beingness is homeostasis the body will always do everything in its capacity to return to a sense of homeostasis it will do everything in its capacity to return it will, like the body heals itself you ever got a cut before you ever get a cut your body heals itself naturally right typically if your body is like operating naturally healthily it's going to heal itself and the more that you are in alignment the more that you are ha feeding your body healthy frequencies vibrations foods interactions your body's going to heal itself better your body naturally heals itself and the real challenge is learning how to get out of our own way and stop con convoluting ourselves with the toxins of this world because this society is a very toxic society and we have to make peace with that because that means it's within us. And so we have to look at ourselves and be like, okay, where am I being toxic? Where do I need to cut out these habits? And where do I need to heal myself so I can show up and be a clear mirror? If that's what you want to do. For me, doing things like this, it's a, it's required of me to do things like that. Because I'm not here to take advantage of anybody. I'm super done with cycles of pain and suffering. I'm not here to perpetuate these loops any longer. I only wish to continue to commit to my journey of healing. And I wish the same for you. Because we're better together ultimately so yeah thanks for letting me be a mirror here today may you continue to find your path in your journey of healing absolutely but you don't need to strive it happens naturally the more you can just find that wave and then ride that wave the more you can get out of your own way and just surrender onto spirit and let god take over let spirit take over absolutely all right we're gonna keep it flowing we're gonna keep it flowing gemini i love you Thank you for this message. House number four on the horizon. If that is in resonance, if I got any healers in the house today, go ahead and drop that number three so I know that you are vibing. Let's get it. I love how you take the cards to a deeper level than 90% of the other tarot readers on here. Hey, that's just what we do. That's just what we do. No need to compare. You know, I'm just doing it in my own way. I'm an expert tarot reader. I've been doing this for lifetimes. I've been doing these live streams for almost two years now. I definitely got that 10,000 hours under my belt. If you ever want to book a one-on-one, -on -one, you can do so on my website, zenthealchemist.com. Right now, we are reading for the collective. What's up, threes? I see you. Up next, we have Cancer. House number four, sun, moon, ascendant, wherever you have. House number four. House number four is the house of the home, the internal world cultivating, because the home is in your heart, and it's where you, it's, you bring it with you wherever you go. Cancer is also the first water sign, the initialization of our psychic capabilities and our cosmic gifts. Nope. Libra is house number seven. Right now, we got Cancer, house number four. Stick around, Nikia. We'll get right to it. We just finished Taurus. You can catch the recording on my YouTube. You can go subscribe there in the links over there in my bio. Right now, it's going to be up tomorrow. Right now, we got Cancer. Sun, Moon, Ascendance. Let's get right to it. Ooh, you get an extra card. I don't know if you saw that, but it jumped right out of my hands. Let's get right to it. We're going to cut it, clear it, let it rest. So focused, so ready. Let's do this this evening. Stoked for all my Cancer baby. Sun, Moon, Ascendant, house number four. What's the message for the home this evening? Cut it, clear it, let it rest. Draw two from the top of the deck. Epic. Super in sync. I get it, indeed. Woo! Alrighty. So the card that jumped in while shuffling, we have once again, Lord of Strife. Five of Wands jumps in once more. Five of Wands. Then we have Fortitude, or known as the Strength card in other decks. Fortitude, Daughter of the Flaming Sword. This is a requirement when it comes to the house. I'm getting uh, three little piggies energy. We'll get we'll get that in a second. What are you building your house out of? We have the nine of wands, the Lord of Great Strength, alongside Fortitude, just super in sync. Fortitude, Lord of Great Strength, nine of swords here in the root, Lord of Despair and Cruelty. We got nine and nine, nine of wands, nine of swords, nine nine. Five of wands, Lord of Strife, and the goddess for you tonight, I, the goddess of adaptability, the goddess of spring. Reminding us that our houses are not meant to be rigid. You see, that's the one of the biggest problems with this modern society. It's like people think that their houses are supposed to, like they, they want to stay in the same place their entire life. But that's just not natural because change is the only constant. Human beings evolve to be nomadic. They evolve to be moving on a consistent basis. They did not evolve to live in boxes as well. Western world has created 90 degree angles, L7 weenie squares out of this world that is round, that is circular and, and spiralic in nature. 
the more we can stay strong, the more we can tune to our personal strengths, the more we can adapt and evolve accordingly. What are we building our house out of? You see, most houses are not homes. Home begins within, and when you have home within, you bring home wherever you go. So right now we're being reminded of where are our walls holding on to despair and cruelty? Where are we holding on to... What's the word I'm looking for? Um, not retribution. Um, it's like when you hold on to something against somebody. Um, I'm trying to think of the words. It's not something I practice often. Um, it'll come to me in a moment. But basically, like when we when we hold on to the pain, when we get addicted to the pain and the suffering, this creates walls. This creates a house of despair and cruelty. Resentment works. And that's not necessarily the word I was going for. I was thinking of grudges. I was thinking of grudges. Thank you, though. That, that inspired me to get to the word. But big time, I appreciate y'all. Exactly. I was thinking of the word grudge, but resentment is so crucial right now to recognize where are seeds of resentment planted in our home, planted in our space. Because ultimately, this is going to, if you don't take that shit from the root right from the start, as soon as you see it, it's going to perpetuate and it's going to create so many more thorns within your space. We are here to forgive, to move forward. We're here to learn from the experience so that we can clear the energy and we can show up from a space of clarity rather than a space of resentment rather than a space of grudgingness rather than a space of trying to get even all that is nonsense we're not here to place blame onto each other we're all out here human and the more we can work together rather than work against each other the more strong our house is going to be but what do they say um a, a house apart what is it something about a house being apart falling <laughs> if you know if you know what i'm talking about you know the quote um a house divided right the quote about a house divided right and that's like unfortunately where some of the biggest uh pains happen in this day and age because most people are disconnected from their spirit and they're divided within themselves and so this creates an entire house of division and that is how society is able to operate by perpetuating these cycles of pain and suffering because western world was created by destroying the home dynamic by destroying the family dynamic capitalism has done everything in its capacity to separate the family to create division within oneself and within the family unit so right now we're being reminded of how important it is to stay true to your own personal values to build your own home within it takes great strength it takes great fortitude and it requires one to be adaptable because that's what nature is really all about that's really what nature is all about. But the more we can stay whole within, the more we can see ourselves as one, then we win. We've already won just by being here today. I can just ramble about this for ages because this is really what it's all about. So as soon as you see a weed within your metaphysical mental garden that perpetuates cycles of despair and cruelty, that's that's that the energy of striving, of trying too hard, that that's just taking you out of your center. We got to learn how to pull that right away. What helps me with that is visualizing, following that thought, following that emotion, following that action or that habit or that pattern all the way down to its root. Where is this coming from? Where did I learn this? Can I dive into my psyche, find its root and then remove this so that I can create a fresh soil so that I can grow truly? Absolutely. Stay true to you. It takes great strength and softness, learning how to stay adaptable. And that's, I think, where this really applies with cancer here. House number four, the water, learning how to be soft and strong at the same time because water is soft and strong at the same time. And water dissolves everything. Water will dissolve the pain and the, and the despair and the cruelty. And so where are you placing your water? Where are you placing your intuition? Where are you placing your emotions? And how is this affecting the way that your life plays out? All right, we're just out here in channel mode right now. Let's keep this going. If that resonated, go ahead and drop that number four so I know that that was a vibe for you. Water is life. It is so healing indeed. And we're 99% water anyway. Let's get it moving. Forrest, I see you. I see you. I see you. Keep it up. Let's do this. Epic, epic, epic. Up next, we have house number five. House number five, we have tonight... Leo, sun, moon, ascendance. House number five is the ego. It's also desire. It's what you want in your life and it's how you wish to express yourself. So the first trinity, excuse me, the first uh, triad um, of, of the signs, houses one through four is all about the internal individual. 
houses five through five, six, seven, eight. Five, six, seven, eight is about how we then show up on a collective level. So once you have your home established within, when you express this, house number five this is how you show up on a collective reflection level. So house number five, sun, moon, ascendance. Do I have any Leos in the house or wherever you may have fifth house in your chart? Wherever you have fifth house in your chart, personally, I have a stellium in the fifth house underneath the sign of Pisces. Sun, moon, ascendant, Leo energy. Let's get right to it. What's the message? Let's get right to it. We are focused. We are flowing. I see you. I see you. Let's get right to it. What's good, Hans? Welcome in. We are doing Tarot Tuesday. Collective readings for everybody. Everybody, welcome in. If you're just now getting here, we're now on house number five. Leo, sun, moon, ascendant. Cut it. Clear it. Let it rest. We get an extra one. Jumped in. Super sly in the middle of the deck. We draw two cards from the top, we'll flip the deck upside down, let's get right to this, big shifts, big, big shifts on the horizon, focus, flowing, how is the connection for y'all, Lakota Hawk says we are freezing up, I love your username, anybody else freezing up, are we clear, right now we are moving forward with house number five, sun, moon, ascendance, Leo, placements, let's get to it. House number five, Leo is also natural in the sun. So we have a Leo sun, that's double sun energy. Focus is the message this evening. Focus. Artemis, the goddess of the moon, ironic. The goddess of the moon, Artemis, jumping in for focus in reverse, reminding us the importance of where we're placing our energy because the sun is your light within you, the soul, S O. UL as well as the SOL soul and how you express your soul onto this life. So how can we focus our light onto the world? We have the high priestess here. The high priestess here, the princess of the silver star. Six of pentacles here. Lord of material success. And we have death here in reverse. Death. And the root child of the great transformers. And we have knight of pentacles here. Knight of Pentacles jumps in while we're shuffling the extra card for Leo, house number five today. Lord of the wild and fertile lands. What do you desire? What do you desire and what do you want to call into your life? Right now we're being called to focus on what it is that we want and not concern ourselves about the how it's going to happen or when it's going to happen. Not concern ourselves about all the potentials, about what could go wrong, all the worries, the doubts, the fears, the disbelief, all the projections of pain and suffering. We're not here to do this. These are collective readings. Alyssa, right now we're reading for Tarot Tuesday, all 12 houses. Right now we're putting an end <clears throat> with a death card here in the root in reverse alongside goddess Artemis focus here in reverse. Where are we here to focus our energies, to put an end, to put to rest patterns, perceptions, attachments, expectations, programs, habits, ways of beingness that are no longer in resonance with our soul, with our sun, with our Leo energy? Because you're a high priestess. Don't you ever forget that. But the world wants to try to convince you that high priestess and magic is something of fiction. But reality is stranger than fiction. The more you can learn how to ground into your own personal practice to connect to that high priestess within, this is how you step into that Lord of material success energy. You don't need anything outside of yourself. Really, all I want is that which wants me. And what want, what you want, wants you already. Don't you ever forget that. Rich in spirit, it's all about the practice, my friend. Lord of the wild and fertile lands. See, this is where we are growing. See, when we focus our energies, when we clear the field, this is how we can then utilize our sunlight to then nurture the seeds that we are planting in this world of wild and fertile lands, the knight of pentacles here, so we can become the embodiment of our soul. Yes, learning how to allow our soul to permeate through every pore of our person. Material success really begins with just being satisfied with what you have right now. And how can you desire to tend to your garden? How can you continue to align your desires with your dharma, with your soul's mission? Absolutely. This person's out here getting hella inspired they're like, oof, 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 I want to, I want to, I want to embodiment in the soul. It's what it's all about, my friend. They're like, ooh, let me go, let me go make a coin off of this. 
copyright. Just kidding. <laughs> just kidding. This is just spirit speaking through me. But yes, high priestess energy. How? Cheers, Roberts. How can you continue to ground into your high priestess energy? What's one thing where you feel most connected to your soul? When, when do you feel most alive? When do you feel most alive? And how can you prioritize, focus your energies to do this? What's good, Alicia? We are currently doing readings for the collective, all 12 house of houses. If you got that message and that was in resonance, go ahead and drop the number five for me to let me know that you are out here vibing, listening. Dancing is one of my favorite things to do to make me feel alive too. Alyssa, I see you. So good to get the body moving. So good to let the light shine because you're a star. Don't you ever forget that. Your body is made out of the exact same energies as all the stars up in the sky. The exact same energy. The more we can allow ourselves to learn how to embody our star as essence, aspects, the more we can then become the embodiment of our soul, swimming the ocean. I feel it. Feel it. All right, let's get to it. We're ready for house number six, Virgo placements. What's good? House number six, sun, moon, ascendance. Virgo is work. So once you have a desire, house number five, now it's working towards that desire, house number six. Virgo, sun, moon, ascendance, wherever you may have a Mercury placement. So Mercury falls naturally in Gemini and Virgo. If, if Gemini is Mercury as in communicating with words, Virgo is the earth element communicating with body language, communicating with our frequency and our vibration, learning how to speak with our being, not even needing to say words. Virgo, house number six. Let's get to this. Do I have any Virgos in the house? We're ready for this. Sun, moon, ascendance. House number six on the horizon. Let's get right. Here. Cut it. Clear it. Let it rest. Focused. Flowing. Let's go. You already know. <laughs> house number six. <laughs> For you this evening we cut it we clear it we let it rest we draw two from the top of the deck let's do this this is powerful now we're starting to warm up we just had to get that funky messages out of the way at the beginning but yo virgo this is for you babes first and foremost we have yostre the goddess of new beginnings here yostre new beginnings ace of swords in reverse <clears throat> six of pentacles look we're on house number six we got the six of pentacles there lord of material success and in the root we got the six of wands lord of victory baby house number six you made it this is the work ultimately see the only card that's right side up is lord of material success we just did alicia we just did leo you were you were listening to that previous message that was leo that's house number five right now house number six so now we are learning how to wield our gifts, our strengths. With the Ace of Swords here, we're learning how to communicate with our body language. So I want you to realize, I want you to remember that we are always communicating. We don't ever stop communicating. Communication is life. Even when we're not talking, we're still communicating. So what energies are you emitting and what energies are you receiving? What energies are you allowing to take up space within your psyche and how is this influencing the world? With the Ace of Swords here alongside the Virgo, I'm getting this energy that you're getting and you're becoming more aware about how you communicate and how your conversation with yourself will then influence and perpetuate which timelines you then step into. Because we're here for victory, baby. You are one. We've already won. We're here for victory. Six of wands in the root. With the Lord of Material Success here, only one that's right side up, I'm getting this energy that we're here to familiarize ourselves with this level of success. Feeling in our bodies that we already have everything that we need. Feeling this energy of knowing that we are complete. That we have everything already encoded with our being, within our DNA, within our TNA, within our Q and A. However many helixes you have, you freaking aliens, you learning how to step into your own personal gifts and wield your swords. Because the element of swords is air. Swords can also be seen as words. The word, look at that. The word sword and words is the same word. So what words are you using and how are you communicating your truth, your gifts unto the world? The universe loves those who continue to show up and commit themselves to their path of getting to know themselves. Because even when you step into new beginnings, you always bring your truth with you wherever you go. I'm getting that around the corner, on the horizon, you're stepping into a fresh chapter. 
Lynn says we're freezing up. Anybody else saying that? Are we clear? Are we clear? What's good? What's good? Learning how to become confident in your skills. Learning how to become confident with your swords, with your words, so you can speak from a space of clarity, so you can speak from a space of confidence, so you can speak from a space of conviction, knowing in your heart that this is what I want. And then also embodying this, because you don't even have to speak. Your presence speaks for itself. I'm, I'm a Gemini moon. I got Gemini moon. I love to talk, my talk. I got a Virgo North node, so a big part of my journey is learning how to embody that, personally. But we already made it. Lord of Victory here, right around the corner. So this success that's ready for you, learning how to recognize that you are worthy of all of the success. This new beginning is a new beginning of material success. All of the work that you've been doing on yourself and within your own personal realm is paying off. Do not ever let anything get in the way of that. Whenever you're feeling discouraged, whenever you're feeling or sensing feelings of anxiety or feel fear or worry you double down on yourself you pick up your sword and you cut through that you say no i am the creator of my reality and i do not allow this to take up space within my psyche any longer i am choosing me as a wise kendrick once said in the song mirror i choose me i'm sorry but then to, to tap into some tyler s energy Sorry, not sorry. Really, sorry, not sorry. Honestly, don't be sorry ever for being yourself. The more you can stay confident and firm and grounded in you, this is your work. Oof, oof. All right, if you want to claim that material success, if you want to claim this around the corner, that victory and your energy, go ahead and drop that six down there so I know that you are listening and you are ready. Let's get to it. Super stoked to be here as a mirror to share this message. Let's keep it flowing. Fantastic, fantastic. Up next, we have house number seven. That's Libra babies. House number seven. That's Libra babies. Happy birthday to all my Libra babies. House number seven is how we work together. So if number five, like I said, houses five, six, seven, and eight, this is how we relate to each other. If number five is your desire, your expression, number six is your work, number seven is how we work together, how we grow together, build together, build relationships, build businesses, build connections, communication, how we find the balance in how everybody does their own thing, and it's important to honor the authenticity of everybody, how we can continue to find a sense of harmony, so we can continue to show up and play together, that's what we're really here to do, just playing, we're just playing with the cards, that's it, nothing <laughs> House number seven, Libra's in the house. I see you. Happy birthday, babes. Let's get right to it today, today, today. Sun, moon, ascendance. House number seven, we are here for this. We cut it, we clear it, we let it rest. House number seven, Libra, sun, moon, ascendance. Let's get right. It's a couple extra cards to you. I guess it's your birthday, babe. We're getting a couple extra cards for you. House number seven. Fantastic. Let's get to it. Ten of Cups here. Lord of perfected success in reverse. Lord of perfected success. Two of Cups here as well in reverse. Lord of love, Lord of love. We have temperance here in the draw. Daughter of the reconcilers, right side up. Knight of wands here. For Libra, Lord of the winds and the breezes. Five of wands, excuse me, knight of swords, five of wands. Lord of strife. This dude's been making many appearances tonight. It looks like we've been trying way too hard. We need to slow down. You don't gotta try, you just gotta be. And the Knight of Pentacles, Lord of Fertile, Wild, Fertile Lands here once again. Exactly, Alyssa, that's the message. Temperance, this is the, one of the key cards on the table right now. And here, Iris, the goddess of communication, which is perfect for house number seven, because house number seven is the second element of air. Air is all about communication and how we communicate together. Right now, we're being reminded to take our time. 
temperance reminds us that we're in no hurry to get anywhere. All good things play out organically. The more we can attune to these frequencies of love and well-being, this is the perfected success we are here to do. We're not here to strive. We are here to stay in alignment with the love within our heart. We're here to take our time. We're here for that honey drip. We're not here for any worries, or any rush. How are you communicating right now? Do you listen to yourself when you talk? I love to listen to myself when I talk. I am definitely talking fast tonight, but that's just because I'm stoked. I could ground a little bit more. I could be a little bit more temperance, and maybe these cards are reminding me to do so as well. With the Knight of Pentacles here, Lord of Wild and Fertile Lands, reminding us the importance of creating a life that creates a field so see life the way i see it life is one big garden it's a field a metaphor and you'll 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 hear this spoken in um quantum physics as well the field of energy ultimately you are the farmer of your personal field may you continue to stay wild and fertile within your field it takes temperance to do this it takes attuning your body which is your instrument to the frequency of love and this is the path of perfecting your success with the five of wands here lord of strife just reminding us like where am i reaching too hard where am i rushing myself where am i trying too hard knight of swords reminding us to continue to recognize how we're using our words how we're using our mental vision and maybe even doing a little reflection of observing our own personal environment our own personal landscape so that we can continue to take our time where am i being called to like maybe slow down a little bit where am i being called to maybe amplify my energy a little bit it's up to you to listen to your intuition and your discernment with iris the goddess of communication in reverse just reminding us the importance that we are always communicating and the more that you can communicate with honesty with truth with love in your heart taking your time to express yourself rather than trying to just rush or force something this is how we can then ground this frequency, this energy of temperance, prioritizing love over everything. Thank you, house number seven. If you dug that reading, let's drop a seven down there for my Libras. Happy birthday. I'm grateful to give you those extra cards. Super stoked and ready to go. Let's get to it. House number seven. Appreciate you this evening. And if house number seven is connection... <clears throat> If house number seven is relationship and connection, house number eight is the evolution of those relationships. So house number eight, Scorpio, can be seen as marriage. It can also be seen as death. It's like joining even deeper in your relationship or putting an end to your relationships. Two sides of the same coin. Scorpio, sun, moon ascendants. House number eight, this is the depths of the darkness of the soul as well, learning how to find our light within our depths. Let's get to it. House number eight today, sun, moon, ascendance for my Scorpio placements. If you're just now joining, welcome in. We are currently doing Tarot Tuesday reading for all 12 houses. We are currently on house number eight, Scorpio. You can catch the recording of this on my YouTube. You can go subscribe over there in my bio. Right now, we got house number eight. Hey, sundown, be patient, my friend. Capricorn is number 10. We got two more, baby. Scorpio. Temperance, Padawan. Patience, Padawan. House number eight, Scorpio today, sun, moon, ascendant. Let's get right to it. Virgo is number six. Looks like you missed it. Check out the recording on my YouTube tomorrow. Scorpio, sun, moon, ascendants. Let's get right to it. Epic, epic. All the cards in reverse for Scorpio. Aries is number one. She was first. So you can check out the recording on my YouTube tomorrow. House number eight, Scorpio, today. All these cards in reverse being reminded of the importance of integrating this energy. Let's get to it. So we have Yi, the goddess of the sun, here. Yi, the goddess of the sun. We all have 8th house placement in our chart. We all have 8th house somewhere. Pluto is also ruled by... Excuse me. Scorpio is also ruled by Pluto. So wherever you have a Pluto placement in your chart. <clears throat> we have Yi. We have the Lord of Love, Two of Cups. 
Princess of Swords here. Princess of the Rushing Winds. Princess of the Rushing Winds, Two of Cups. And Lord of Swiftness here, Eight of Wands. Eight for house number eight in the root. Hey, Ryan, I see you. Thank you dearly. Here we are for Scorpio. All these cards in reverse reminding us because Scorpio, the second water sign, who is the, basically the bottom of the ocean, the depths of the darkness, Scorpio. It's really easy for my Scorpio babies to get stuck in cycles of self-doubt, of worry, of beating oneself up. It's so easy for the eighth house energies to do this. So right now we're being reminded to shine our light into these areas of our life. Where are we feeding into our shadow from an unhealthy fashion and how can we illuminate this how can we ascend this how can we heal these aspects of self how can we bring the light to our shadow so that we can alchemize it because ultimately some of our greatest strengths and some of our greatest gifts exist within our shadow but when our shadow is operating from a triggered traumatized or unhealed space we're going to create more pain within the world but when we uplift when we alchemize when we ascend transcend our wounds and we heal them we can actually find some of our greatest gifts to then apply this to the world around us. This is where the Lord of Love comes in. Princes of Swords reminding us about where we're placing our energy. Swords being the element of focus. We're getting this energy since the Princess of Swords is not the Queen or the King. She's on her way to the throne, so she's getting a sense of how this works for her. With the Eight of Wands here, Lord of Swiftness is showing me how rapidly this is happening. Light speed, baby. Light speed, eight of wands, like this is happening like that. And if you want that, that's all yours. That's all yours. You're allowed to want this. You're allowed to choose this journey of healing. There's no shame. Every bit of you is valid. You are not your mistakes. You are not your traumas. You can allow yourself to continue to tune in to yourself, figure out where you need to bring light to your life. That's what I'm going to start saying, by the way. Love and life. Love and life rather than love and light love and life that's really what it's all about that's really what it's all about love and life so how can you learn how to love your life and how can you continue to bring your light to your shadow aspects of self ultimately where are we holding ourselves back and how can we continue to honor our truth unapologetically shining our light burning through any of these limiting beliefs patterns or programs that are not in resonance with our divinity ultimately love and life godspeed yes love and life because i want a life of love if that was if you dug that message regardless of where you have house number eight or any scorpio placements go ahead and drop that eight down there so i know you're vibing we're going to keep this energy moving with sagittarius house number nine so if houses one through four are about the internal of the individual, if, if houses five through eight are about how we relate to one each other as individuals, nine through 12 is all about the collective from an ascended perspective of how we are operating on a collective level. Sagittarius, fire, let's get right to it. Let's get right to it. Sagittarius is higher guidance, higher wisdom. Tapping into that intelligence of the crown chakra and how the wisdom above us, the light above us, can seep into our soul, ultimately. Maybe like some sun gazing energy. House number nine. Do I have any Sagittarius in the house? Sun, moon, ascendance. Let's get right to it. Sagittarius. We're going to cut this deck. We're going to clear it. We're going to let it rest. Timing was incredible. What can I say, Rhea? Welcome in. Good to see you, my friend. Right now, we are here for Sagittarius. Sun, moon, ascendance, wherever you may have a Jupiter placement. Let's get right to it. We cut it. We clear it. We let it rest. We draw two from the top of the deck. We flip the deck upside down to show the root. And one goddess for you. Oof. Alrighty. A little spicy reading. Not surprised, Sagittarius. Let's get right to it. We have the devil here in the draw. Lord of the gates of matter, the devil. <clears throat> Lord of pleasure here. Six of cups, Lord of pleasure. Six, nine, nine of cups in the root, Lord of material happiness. 
Lord of Pleasure, Lord of Material Happiness, Lord of the Gates of Matter, and Aphrodite, the Goddess of Romantic Love. This is all about the balance. This is learning the difference between egoic desire, like personal, self-focused desire, and desire that's for our dharma, desire for fulfilling our soul's mission. Because if you ask me, I believe that we all have a soul mission. If you believe that you have a soul, I believe that you have a soul mission, that you came here with a purpose, with a destiny, with a dharma. You came here for something that's much deeper than just satisfying your animalistic desires and your body's yearnings that's where this devil energy is coming in and it's like okay is this pleasure that i'm yearning for is this in alignment with my core with my deep values with my soul or is this just because my body is yearning for something and this is where it's requiring one to dive deeper into one's psyche and asking where is this coming from where is this want coming from this is ultimately what it's really all about because we deserve to live a life of romantic love. We deserve to live a life that is rooted in love, love and life ultimately. But the devil, we all have demons. We all have angels. We all have a negative polarity. We all have a positive polarity. We all have an aspect of self that is the best version of ourself and we all have an aspect of self that is the worst version of ourself. And the devil will disguise itself in the in the prettiest form outfits in the most appealing forms in order to try to take us off of our path in order to try to distract us this is where it's so important to be clear with oneself where is this yearning where is this desire coming from where am i seeking this pleasure and why ultimately as well why is it this is like where it's really crucial really really crucial because it's really important to have yearnings it's really important to have wants and desires but is this desire from a superfluous surface level animalistic space or is this desire because my soul came here to learn this lesson and this is a part of my evolution as a soul as an individual here on earth because earth is school for the souls and the more that we can ground into this mission to become clear within ourselves the more we can tame these devils make peace with them the more that we can become the masters of our reality. But if we're constantly being distracted by these superfluous, surface-level, animalistic tendencies, the more that we're going to perpetuate these cycles of pain and suffering. This is where it's so important to be radically responsible for ourselves and where we're getting in our own way. But if you're here resonating with this today, I get the sense that you have been making peace with these devils within and now you've become much more clear within your pleasure and what it is that you want to experience and this will ultimately bring you that material happiness so you can enjoy your life here on earth because you deserve a life that is rooted in romantic love and it doesn't need anybody outside of yourself you can build a life of romantic love with the earth with yourself with the universe i mean it's really nice to be able to share that with somebody but you don't ever want to succumb or compromise your values or your integrity just because you're feeling lonely. Like when it comes to romantic love, if this is the message, if this is the way that you want to take that with creating romantic love with somebody, it's so important that you choose to link with somebody who has the similar, if not the same, core value so you can complement, amplify, encourage, and hold each other accountable on this path. You don't want somebody who's going to pull you off your path. You want someone who's going to encourage you to go deeper into your path. All right. House number nine, that's my higher wisdom for you tonight. Let's keep it moving. For all those Capricorns who couldn't resist, here it is, house number 10. If that was in resonance, go ahead and drop that number nine. We got the nine of cups right there in the root. I just think it's awesome that we had an eight in the root for Scorpio, house number eight. We got a nine in the root for Sagittarius, house number nine. That's how you know we're in sync right now, if you ask me, ultimately. Let's keep it moving. If you have creator in one life, but if you have creator in life, one is never alone. Exactly, Debbie. You already know. <laughs> Hans, it could be applied to deeper things too, though. It's not necessarily just sexual tendencies. It could also be like food. It could also be um, choosing to desire things like um, comfort because uh, comfort leads to complacency 
well, first, this I've never heard anyone say this. So if you're gonna repeat this, you you know maybe maybe give me a little credit if you want to. Um, but see, see, capitalism is built on the desire for comfort. The desire for comfort leads to convenience, and the desire for convenience leads to complacency. And this is one of the biggest inhibiting factors to stop people from their journey of growth. So the desire can be sexual, but it could also be the animalistic tendency to make sure they want to have like tasty food in their body and then like your body will then create like a micro environment that is addicted to like very unhealthy things and we have to make peace with that we have to learn how to work through that if we wish to really commit to the core ultimately but that's just me and my personal journey i'm not here to tell you how to live your life i'm just here to do my own thing and if you're inspired bless up Alrighty, we're flowing forward. House number 10, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Ascendance. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Ascendance. Let's get right to it. <laughs> Turbo's like, I've been waiting. I've been waiting. <laughs> so Capricorn is the foundation. So once you have that higher guidance from Sagittarius, now you can build an entire foundation of this. Absolutely, Hans. Mad love. Alrighty. Yeah, life begins at the end of the comfort zone. Alrighty. Capricorn is the foundation where we're building our new reality. Where we're, where we're, it's the dance floor. It's the dance floor. So if like Sagittarius is the music and the inspiration, Cap Capricorn is the dance floor where you then apply your your inspiration. It's that rigid structure, Saturn placement. It's being able to return to rules and structure so we can continue to stay consistent in our creation. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Ascendance, House number 10, Saturn placements, wherever you have it in your chart tonight. Let's get it. Let's get it. We cut it. We clear it. We let it rest. Focused, flowing, Capricorn for you today. What's the message, shall we say? I like it. I like it. Alrighty, let's get right to it. <clears throat> so we have the Five of Swords here for Capricorn. Dang, dude, that's three in a row. I'll get to it in a second. I'll tell you why I said that. Five of Swords here. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Ascendance, Lord of Defeat. Fortitude here. Fortitude in reverse, daughter of the flaming sword, lord of defeat. And the wheel of fortune, card number 10 for the 10th house. That's three in a row. We had eight for eighth house. We had a nine for ninth house. And we have a 10 for 10th house in the roots. My dudes, this is how you know spirit is moving through right now. Synchronicities, just do it right on the table, right before your very eyes. Lord of fortune, forces of life. Reverse. And the goddess for you tonight, Capricorn, Freya. The goddess of the battlefield, the wife of Odin, goddess of radical acceptance. So, I don't know if you know this, but Capricorn, excuse me, Saturn has been making some big shifts this year, going through Aries and then retrograde and, and back to, excuse me, Pisces and back to before it makes its way into Aries. So it's completing, Saturn's completing his last chapter before he restarts his clock, his way around the circle. This is like law and order. Capricorn is like governmental energy. So this is why we've been seeing immense shifts on societal level like this. But also we have this within ourselves to learn how to create the laws and the order within ourselves to recognize and remember that God's law is higher than man's. And ultimately your values, your beliefs, and your foundation is where it really all begins because you, my friend, are the land. And the society is attempting to colonize every bit of your mind, your body, and your soul. That's what capitalism does in its best capacity but we're not here see we're here to defeat that energy we're here to continue to show up and be fortuitous to commit to our strength to commit to our frequency of fortune so how can we continue to attune our bodies to the frequency of fortune 
Freya, the goddess of radical acceptance, is showing us a superpower right now. The capacity to radically accept what is happening at hand allows you to stay in your seat of the center as the creator of your reality. So how even with all of the scare, scariness, all of the difficulty, all the challenges that one may experience, radically accepting this, making peace with this, and still choosing to show up and focus on the silver lining, choosing to show up and focus on the love within your heart, the fortune, like just the fact that I'm able to be here right now to share this message, and somehow, some way, you can pick this up on your own and let it be in resonance like that is fortune within itself like we're fortunate to have a roof over our head right now to be able to feed ourselves to put food to put water and clean water in our body we're fortunate to have a healthy mind a healthy spirit and a healthy soul the little things that we can be grateful for that we can recognize how fortunate we are to have this is how we can then shift our entire dynamic of our life stay strong stay fate fortuitous but ultimately you cannot be defeated you cannot be defeated because you are undefeatable. You are impervious, especially when you have your connection with source. With God, all things are possible. And I'm not saying some white guy in the sky controlling things like puppet strings. I'm talking about the divinity within you and me, recognizing how we are all creating our reality every single instant of every single day. And the more we can radically accept that, okay, like... I'm creating a life that I don't really like. How can I radically accept my actions? And how can I choose to do new actions? How can I stay strong in my core so I can choose new patterns and pathways that are actually going to create the life that I wish to see? But it's a two-step process because a lot of time before we really wake up, before we actually get started on our journey, we have to clear a bunch of karma. And this is, this is like tilling the soil. This is like going through the farmland and like tearing up all of the earth so that we can like work through all of that dense energy that isn't here ready. But when we do that, we create a fertile landscape to plant the seeds that it is that we wish to grow in our metaphysical field. And this is what also Capricorn is representative of. Saturn being the god of time and harvest because everything happens organically in perfect timing. <clears throat> This is how we can then attune to these frequencies of fortune, just how lucky we are to be here today. Oof, what an honor and a joy it is to share this message. Thank you, 10th house. I gotta drink some water. Gotta stay hydrated. Cheers to all y'all angels. Radical acceptance is a superpower, I tell you what. It's a, it's a superpower. <clears throat> because what we resist persists. But when we can accept things as they are, this is how we reclaim our power. We stay true to our core and our divinity. How fortunate we are. Don't ever take it for granted. The more we can show gratitude, the more we can show appreciation for this experience, the more we can remind ourselves of how precious this existence is. If that resonated, go ahead and drop that X, letter X, number 10. Shouts out to XXX, Tentacion, my mans, out here doing the thing in the center of the universe. I see you doing the do. Shouts out, shouts out. Let's groove, let's groove. <clears throat> I see you, I see you. Let's keep it going. <clears throat> House number 11 on the horizon. That is Aquarius, babies. Aquarius, sun, moon, ascendance. House number 11, ruled by Uranus. Uranus. House number 11. <clears throat> so if Capricorn is the dance floor... House number 11 is the dancers. If, if house number if house number 10 is the dance floor, house number 11 is the dancers, the people dancing together. This is like collective energy. This is how we appear as a complete crew. Jesse, what's your question? What are you talking about? What? <clears throat> I see you dancers out here. You know what I'm talking about. You're picking up what I'm putting down. Keep grooving. Keep grooving. House number 11, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Ascendance, Uranus, Placements. House number 11 is the collective. This is a, yes, yes, yes. Jesse, you must have missed it. I was using a metaphor to describe Capricorn. <clears throat> you have to check out the recording on my YouTube. You can go subscribe over there on my bio. It'll be up tomorrow. House number 11, Cap Sun, Moon, Ascendance, Aquarius. Let's get to it. I see you. I see you. Let's get right to it.
Nah, Jesse, you'll have to go check the recording. I'm already moving forward. You'll have to go watch the recording on my YouTube tomorrow. Right now, we got house number 11, Aquarius. These cards are ready to play. We're jumping into it. They're jumping out of my hands. Let's keep this moving. Caroline, we already read for house number four, Cancer. You can go check out the recording on my YouTube tomorrow. Right now, we are on house number 11, Aquarius. Let's get to it. Sun, moon, ascendance. Epic. Epic, epic. Leo's house number five. <clears throat> we have Demeter, the nurturer here for house number 11. Aquarius in the house, you already know it. Sagittarius is house number nine, y'all. You gotta learn your clock. You gotta learn your clock, babies. Aquarius is house number 11. Pisces is number 12. And then we're done for the night. You can go check out the recording on my YouTube. We're already on the second and last one. Where you been? Princess of Wands here. Princess of Wands here. Princess of the Shining Flame. That's you, babes. Lord of Victory here. This is that Age of Aquarius energy we're stepping into on a collective level. <clears throat> Six of Wands. Princess of Wands. King of Swords in the Root. GG. You already know, Hans. Prince of the Chariots of the Winds. Aquarius, King of Swords. Aquarius being the final element of air in the chart. This is where we're getting into recognizing Aquarian Age. The Aquarian Age, you've heard of that, right? This is where we all are divine. We are all God, Goddess. We are all King, Queen. We are all Emperor, Empress. The Aquarian Age, at least if you ask me, is the reality where we can all step into our personal power because there's plenty to go around. There's an infinite abundance of power and love and joy within everything in our life. And if you're here right now, you made it. You are one. You have one. You are in the seat of victory. Now is your time to just familiarize yourself with this space. <clears throat> With the king of swords being in the root and reverse, in reverse, learning how to familiarize yourself with this frequency of victory, nurturing these seeds that you have been planting for yourself, staying focused on your dreams and your reality, regardless of the form that's happening, because the universe is always going to test us. It's always going to see like, wait, are you actually going to stay true to your vision? Or are you going to succumb? Are you going to falter? Right now we're being called the reminder, the importance of alchemy. <clears throat> With the strong wands energy on the table, it's practicing your own personal magic, your own personal fire, learning how to transmute any vibrations, any frequencies, any patterns, any perceptions, programs, ways of beingness that are not in alignment with you stepping into your regal aspects, your king of swords energy, learning how to stay rooted in your throne, not allowing your awareness to be distracted by the specifically the